Pixar's Coco was in development for six years before being released on November 22, 2017. And during that time, the story went through several revisions. Miguel's original voice actor had to be replaced, and the animators had to figure out how to avoid skeleton wedgies. Stick around to hear about these behind-the-scenes stories and more as we take a look at 10 fun facts about how Coco was made. One of Coco's revisions changed how the story would begin. It was originally going to start with a song to explain the significance of Dia de los Muertos. The scene was eventually scrapped because the filmmakers found out that the song was entertaining but wasn't helping test audiences understand the holiday any better. Me. Me. However, there was one part of the intro that was kept, which was when Ernesto de la Cruz sings Remember Me. Remember me. Pixar has lots of Easter eggs hidden throughout all of their movies. And in Coco, there is a scene when Miguel runs through a market, and a pile of Buzz and Woody pinatas can be seen in the background. The real reason for this Easter egg, though, was to pay homage to the many Pixar-themed pinatas the animator saw during the research trips in Mexico. If you know about any more Easter eggs in Coco, share them by leaving a comment below. So get free footwear. Coco was first planned to be a full-out musical, Rivera! Rivera! and was even going to have Miguel's family involved in the songs, too. But the whole idea was eventually scrapped because the animators realized it didn't make any sense that a family who forbids music would break out into song throughout the movie. Together forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and whether we like it or not. The six-year development cycle for Coco ended up affecting who would be providing Miguel's voice. In the film, his voice was performed by Anthony Gonzalez, but the role initially went to Emilio Fuentes. But over six years, his voice changed, so he had to be replaced. The director still wanted him to play a role in the movie, though, so he was cast as the stagehand. Ernesto pushes aside during the climax of the film. Please, senor, you are in 30 seconds. Yeah. Early on, Abuelita was going to use a wooden spoon to whack anyone that was out of line. But eventually the spoon was changed to be a chancla or sandal to be more authentic to Mexican culture. It's just Dante. Never name a street dog. They'll follow you forever. Part of Dante's character was inspired by a dog the filmmaker saw during a dinner visit with a family in Oaxaca. During dinner, the family's basset hound kept sneaking into the room to take bites of a muffin on the ofrenda, and someone from the family would always rush over to try and stop him. The filmmakers thought it was a pretty funny sight and decided it would be a perfect fit for Dante's character. Another one of Coco's story revisions was about how Miguel would return home. Originally, when Miguel was introduced to his dead relatives, he would find out they were cursed by having to sing whenever they opened their mouths. The guitar, give it to me. <laughs> and the only way to break the curse would have been to destroy Ernesto's guitar, which Miguel needed to get back home. However, this plotline was abandoned once the characters Hector and Ernesto were further developed. The city Guanajuato inspired the design for the Land of the Dead, with the way its buildings are stacked on top of one another. The animators wanted their city to have a congested design as well, and to also tell a story about Mexico's architectural heritage. You'll see Aztec pyramids at the base of the towers, and then the architecture becomes more and more modern, with metropolis scaffolding at the top. Some of the most challenging effects in CG animated films aren't big explosions or extravagant action set pieces but instead can come from much more subtle areas, such as the way fabric interacts with the characters. For example, in The Incredibles, shirt grabs were some of the most difficult effects of the whole movie. Click the YouTube card on the screen if you'd like to learn more facts about how The Incredibles was made. On Coco, however, the problems with fabric were a huge challenge because the clothing was interacting with skeletons, which meant costumes would often get stuck between the characters' bones, and would sometimes create some skeleton wedgies. To solve the issue, they had to create a technique called Continuous Collision Detection, which as the name suggests, meant they programmed the fabric to know where the characters were, even when they moved at a fast pace. My family always, always puts my photo on the ofrenda. That devil box tells you nothing but lies. If there's a movie you'd like to learn about next, please leave a comment below. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe to learn more fun facts about your favorite films.